Hey y'all, so I am back with another video. I'm going to be doing a full set and I have already started my natural nail prep. So I have done all of my cuticle work. I've applied my tips, shaped them, and now I'm just cleansing that nail plate. And I do have alcohol sprayed on my brush. So I am just making sure that these nails are squeaky clean before I apply any product onto them. So once all of that is done, I'm going to come in with my dehydrator and then I'm also going to use two coats of primer. And for my dehydrator and primer, I am using Mia Secret. Here lately, y'all, I have been having such a hard time buying monomer, especially, you know, since I need the gallon. It's like Everywhere you go online, it's out of stock. I've been going to a place that I usually go to and they have been tripping with their shipping. So I've just been going through it. If you guys have any suggestions on a good monomer, please let me know. And it has to be accessible. Like I need to be able to go on there, order it <laughs> and not have to worry about running out because that's pretty much how I'm living these days on the edge girl <laughs> people come in and I'm like oh lord I hope I'm gonna have enough monomer because uh, I'm just struggling with trying to get it shipped to me so to start this set off I'm going to be taking this color and this is young nails cover pink I believe or what is this no this is not young nails y'all <laughs> I am all over the place this monomer has me going crazy I promise this is Valentino's Perfect Nude. So I'm applying this starting at the cuticle and then I'm just bringing it down towards the tip. But I'm pushing most of that product to the right side of that tip. What I'm going to do is come back and fill this in with a color. So I'm making sure most of that product is to the side. I could go in and apply this and then cut it out, but that's just going to be doing too much. So I'm going to apply it as I need it, and then I'm going to come back and fill that in. And here I'm just taking my cuticle bead and I'm placing that at the back of the nail pressing the product in so most of that acrylic is on the inside of that nail so I can build up good strength and have a good apex and now I'm just patting it down and then once I have it patted down where I need it to go I'll just blend it in with the first bead that I applied on the tip. So for this nail, I'm going to be doing a V-cut French. So I'm going to start off by taking my bead, starting at the center of the nail, and then just walking that bead down. I'm applying it as if I was going to be doing just a full coverage of this nail. So once I have it shaped onto that tip, I'm going to just move on and leave it because I want it to start curing. I want it to set up and dry, not dry all the way, but almost dry. So when I come in and cut it, it'll be a nice and smooth cut. So for this middle finger, I'm going to come in with Glam and Glitz Heat Wave. And I'm pretty sure that this is what I use. I'll make sure that I double check though. But this is one of my old school colors i remember like when i first started buying a whole bunch of glam and glitz i used this color like all the time i thought it was just so pretty even this set i am doing an inspired set so i'll be sure to show you guys where i got it from but this is pretty much a design that i feel like i used to do all the time like this was the style a couple of years ago so i'm bringing it back girl i'm bringing it back so i'm gonna come back to this finger it's set up for a little bit and now i'm coming in with my exacto knife and i have had this exacto knife for like forever honey i doled this baby out and that's how i want it i don't want to be using anything that's too sharp when it comes to using it on other folks so i have that dull exacto knife and i'm just taking it 
pointing the point of that exacto knife to her side walls to those grooves and then that's where i'm going to make my cut and i'm going to make sure that i really clean this up i don't want to leave any acrylic behind you see that under there get that all off you don't want to leave it all messed up because once it dries you're going to have to deal with it either way so clean it up make sure that it's good so now I'm coming back to this finger and as you can see, I kind of just applied that, got it where it needed to go and then I jumped back to that other finger before it dried up on me. So now what I'm doing is I'm just shaping this, making sure that it is all smooth before that set up on me. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add my cuticle bead. Okay, so I'm coming back to this finger while that acrylic is still wet and I'm going to place my charm. Now in the picture you see they had their charm down towards the tip, but since she has stiletto, I'm not even going to try and fit that charm down there. So I'm going to put it back here by the cuticle area. I'm going to use my brush to really try to press that charm in. Now this charm I have had for a very long time and they are super thin. So you're able to bend them beforehand to just how you like it. But here I'm going to also come in with a nail form so I can try to press that into that acrylic. Now I'm also going to come in and take my brush and press that in, which you should not be doing because what happened is I applied too much pressure and then I made a little dent there in my acrylic. So I'm gonna try and smooth it out. That's not gonna work. So I end up having to apply just a very, very tiny bead of that Glam and Glitz to fill that in. Okay, so for this finger, I don't know how I skipped over and not filled this in yet, but I'm coming back to this one and filling it in with my cuticle bead. Now, once I have that done, I'm going to let that dry again so I can file it. And now I'm coming to the ring finger. And on this nail, the design was a black marble. Well, in the picture, her marble was very much a sheer one. So this is a perfect example about how your tips will affect your design. Now, I have a natural tip on. I pretty much did my prep and I knew what I was doing, but I did not look at it before I started this set. If I would have looked at it, I would have applied a clear tip on this nail. This would have made a huge difference. It still looked it good. It still was a black marble, but over a clear tip would have gave off a totally different look to it, which is what I was going for because that is what was in the picture. But like I said, I didn't look at the picture before I started, which I'm telling you, some days you you sit down, you just go, 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 and you forget to do the things that you know you need to be doing. Like you look back and you're like, I knew better than to do something like that. <laughs> so this was one of those. So like I said, I'm going to be doing a marble and I am just taking straight up black and clear. Now, any time too that I'm using clear, a uh, clear acrylic, you know darn well that the clear is going to show whatever is underneath it. So I don't know what I was thinking with this natural tip, honey. I never <laughs> make this kind of mistake, but I don't know what was wrong with me this day. Your girl was off. So to save it though, I'm going to come in and add some foil. Now the picture did have foil, but in this case, it, it really came um, to my rescue <laughs> per se, because I'm able to fill in any spots that show really that tip. I still want you to be able to see some sheerness and some clear, but that really helped when I was able to apply that foil. 
So I finished that nail and I came back to this one. I've already filed it into shape and now I'm just going to fill it in with this black. Now when it comes to black, I find that it's just so difficult to use that there's not any sense in trying to get it so perfect. Like I know I'm going to get it onto the body. So I just try to do the best that I can really make sure that I pat it and smooth it out. And, and that's what I mean. You see there how as soon as I start smoothing it out and blending on top of that nail bed, that black comes up. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to continue on, make sure that this black is smooth in the shape that I want it to be. And then I'll come back and I'll file whatever is left on there. So for the pinky, like I said, I'm going to fill it in. So I'm just going to take that black and I'm going to press that in to that little divot that I left there. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure that I even it up with what I already have, that nude. And then I make sure that it's smooth and flat and even. That's the most important thing when you're doing something like this. You want to make sure that it's all equal, your tip. You don't want one side too thin and then the other side too thick now this is black like i said you have to be <laughs> careful to not get it everywhere and i do not want to have to come back and file this one so i am smoothing it out and then as i smooth it out i'll clean off my brush come back in and just wipe away anything that i don't want i don't even want that little bit of black on that nude once I have that done, I'm going to come in and start adding some foil. And that's what I mean by not doing all of the extra work in cutting this because you don't need a perfect line here. I'm just covering it up with foil. So all of that is unnecessary. So I'm just going to apply that foil and I'm just doing it randomly down that line. It does not have to be perfect. Matter of fact, I find that when you kind of do it one side here and one side there, that's how I like it. I think it looks best like that. So once I have everything applied, I went in and I capped everything with clear and now I'm coming in and I am doing my finished filing. So on my last video, I mentioned to you guys that I was trying to get into just doing my hand file for my finished filing. So I have been doing it since that video on a few of my clients and let me tell you it has not been all peaches and cream okay I feel like I am taking super long when it comes to this darn hand filing granted though the nails look fabulous <laughs> I love the way hand filing looks like overall but I don't know if I'm willing to just sacrifice more time to get it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to find the balance in between using my e-file and also using my hand file because really what it comes down to is I want to do whatever is going to give me the best result. And the hand filing does that, okay? <laughs> I'm pretty upset about it, as you can tell. <laughs> It does that, but man, it takes me some time to do it. And I'm not used to doing it, y'all. My little wrist been hurting, okay? I'm like, uh-uh, this is some work, but darn, it's worth it. I, I did a client the other day, and I always kind of struggle with her shaping. And it's solely because of how her nail beds are are how they are made and I did hand fouling on her and I just kept looking at them because I was like damn it I love these <laughs> nails I, I love the shape that I was able to give her so I'm gonna keep trying y'all <laughs> and try to get it together try to make it a routine hopefully if I do that it'll just become natural to me and it'll be faster 
So I have all my hand filing done and now I'm coming in and I'm sealing my cuticle area. Now this is not up for discussion. I am not giving this up y'all. <laughs> I'll do my little hand filing but I am going to come in and use my sanding band okay. Now when I mean seal the cuticle area as you can see I'm just going at the back of her nail. I'm sealing the cuticle area and and I come down on the body a little bit but my sole purpose here is to flush out that cuticle area so there is no lifting back there so it's a smooth finish when they grow out they won't be lumpy and bumpy back there it'll be all smooth so that is definitely a must for me i'm going to continue to do that so that is it for this set y'all thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in another video bye